Hi everybody, my name is Norman Fong, and are you on? Good. Uh, okay, today's topic is actually, I do apologize, I don't have a lot of uh, booming sample in flower for you. Uh, this is almost the end of the uh, Ringo Starter Jack and Pia season, and we do have Amanda want to have a special request for this, and I thought, okay, this is a perfect time. Even though I don't have a lot, I usually don't give a subject when I have a lot of uh, specimen, but no matter what, we always do not have big uh, enough of the ingredient uh, for sale because they're selling so fast. But how many of you have grow and grab them uh, that uh, Ringo started Jack and Tia? Anybody? Okay, good. Uh, it's one of my favorite uh, Ringo, well, there's not many Ringo started, but the Ringo started Jack and Tia is actually belong to the Vendacious uh, Alliances. So under the Vendacious Alliances, you have Ringo Stardust, you have Venda, you have Pananopsis, uh, the authorities and so they all r related and also they can also inter interbreeding uh, so they give you intergenetic uh, we get into that later but so Ringo started Jack and Tia is actually uh, very easy to grow uh, even if you as a beginner but never ever buy this you know what I call the the eyelash side. Your minimum should be this big. Okay, this is about four years old seeding, and they reach. They need to get at least to this side to have first bloom seeding for you. Uh, as the plant mature, uh, the the harmonica just like the the venda, and also the anquetan that we had we talked about a couple of weeks ago. Uh, and great in commerce. The monocarp mean they don't have any rhizome like Catalia. So they always go and up and occasionally they will have psychiki. Uh, but that is only when the, the central crown is got damaged. So if you have the engraven uh subdentalia, the engraven uh commerce, uh you actually they, you can put it all together in the same category. Uh, the Anguetan Sepatiaria actually start, uh, will flower earlier for you and they almost don't flower. And then the this is the Anguetan. Now this is the uh, Ringo Starter Jack and Tia. So there's many color form and one of I there's about four major color now. There's a Alva, there's a spotted one, there's the I can tell the leaf. This is the, the red one. How the, the red one is easy to tell because they always give you this red pigmentation here. Okay, and they can you guys smell this fragrance? It's highly scented, highly scented. And greater uh, the no Ringo Starter Jacket here is actually uh, very fascinating. And if you whether it's going outdoor, if you live in Florida, or indoor, it's perfect even for under light. They the very slow grower. They there's a there's a specimen, a big white one that I show you. Uh, that's a belong to a good friend of mine in Taiwan, and he is the master in growing those big gigantic. Uh, I ask him how long is that big giant one? About 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 five about almost five uh four or five feet, and he sell he told me he sell them by the foot, <laughs> and and. The ingredient, the that kind of wow factor, it, there's a one ring of solid jacket here, the red one. Got, I think a special session of best show in Japan Grand Prix in February, Valentine's Day. Okay, uh, that one is about six feet tall and it's about 20 years old. So he sold it for about, a, a really about uh, the person who bought it, you know, he said, it's worth every penny of it because uh, it's actually even airlifted to Japan. And he won the Grand Champion of the show. That plant won him a Mercedes Benz. The sponsor of the show at the Japan Grand Prix. 
is Mercedes Benz. So they also got the uh, 30, 30 men of 30 men of fans by the interview by the by the N N NHK. Yeah, anyway, so but the the Angretan, no, I keep saying Angretan, but Ringo Starr is uh, jacking here. Uh, for me, because I'm in Southern California, uh, I know it's in Florida. You can actually go in the basket because you have if you're living in a very high humidity area, Florida, South Florida, even in o Orlando area. Uh, basket very similar uh, culture basket than the vent that you have the only difference is if you go in uh, the, the part of the, the region uh, you don't want to give in, you don't have to give them as much light as venda you what usually people put it below the venda or underneath there so they can actually get less light the vendacious Ringo Star jacket here do not get light as much light as a regular venda uh, in fact, only about for me here, we go, we can actually go in with a Thanatopsis light in the summertime when it's really hot here. I would say if you uh, really just test it, it's sometime in the summertime, in, in the winter time right, right now, we generally give them a lot more light because the light intensity is, is less. And I'm going to give this perfect example. This is the spotted one. In, in theory, uh, in general, the white one always flower earlier, and then the pink one, and then the peach one, the spotted one, and the red one usually flower last. But when they are, this is the spotted one. It, uh, it's very, it's not uncommon when they are start spiking that you're gonna drop leaf, uh, lose a couple of leaf at the bottom. That's okay because they, the print uh, would require a lot of Okay, we're back in business. Okay, so when they are in spikes, this is general side of, it's not uncommon, they're gonna lose a couple of leaf. And for me to, uh, you can actually, I, you can actually cut them off, especially if we had to take it to the show. Okay, so I always frame your tool when you cut them, and then this is then is more presentable. Uh, this is actually for the wrinkle starter jacket here. I think this is very good for the size like this. It's very good for under light because they really don't grow that tall very fast. They only put up about maybe one or two leaf a year under light or even in Southern California. So this is why you want to always want to buy the biggest one you can because this one uh, this is a really slow grower. Especially a lot of these uh, Ringo Starter jacket here now are uh, all what we call the 4N, the tetrapore. The tetrapore will give you bigger flower but they're also slower grower. Okay, so. So how old are those? Hmm? How old are those? Most of this that we that this, on this size, in five inch part, these are all about at least four years from C. This is why sometimes uh, people always ask me, PM me, you know, they saw, they saw it on eBay for a little tiny one for $15, I said, don't do it. <laughs> because uh, is they, they actually go, they, a lot of the time, they probably just got shipped from Thailand. And so they, the small print, they got airlifted here, uh, they, they be rooted. So it's not, a lot of people, if you're beginner, you're gonna take an extra long time to get them going, okay? 
picture this. Uh, you know, if you've been to Thailand, their humidity is about 80%. Okay, so they're going to have an adjustment to the drier condition. So uh, even if I, if we import orchid from Thailand, Ringo Sutter, for example, we always get the big plant like this. We never buy the small one, even though they, they're less expensive, but it's not worth it. Because when the plant like this small, even at our nursery, as we grow them on, uh, every year, every repotting, uh, generally speaking, we, we, we put usually about we out another 20%. We just you know some uh, because they are from sea, uh, but uh, we don't use. Uh, I don't like uh, you know if nobody can spray like what Thailand does. They spray every week. <laughs> they spray a lot of fungicide. So uh, unless you uh, so that then we for example we don't like to use we don't use fun, uh, the hard cross fungicide. So the we kind of do the natural cross. If you strong enough, you survive. You know the the, the weaker one we we just uh, discard it. And so, uh, as far as the light is concerned, uh, once this in flower, okay, here's another example of, I'm gonna finish, so once they down flower, finish, okay, you want to cut them as fast as possible. You don't want to let them uh, hang up there. Uh, a lot of time when I ask my friend, how he got those plants the big, okay? And the trick, very similar to the, the, the one I did on Cataria before. A lot of that, that's the one that he has, one of the photographs, he had about 15 spikes. He has so many plants, he said, no, that's not big enough. He actually chopped them all off. He didn't fly, he did the flower, opened about halfway to two thirds, and he cut them out as a cut flower. That way, the plant, is otherwise the plant is going to flower another two months uh, from beginning to the end. He rather to that the plant use those two months to continue to grow the vegetative stage. So it's totally different uh, philosophy. If you are in Florida, this is the, might be the way for you if you want to really groom the plant for for sure. You can actually, uh, uh, if you are staging in the, for the show, you can actually cut all the spike earlier. Do not let it on the, fl the flower, on the plant as long as, as two months. So that way you, the plant, when you cut the spike off, the plant, the physiology, go into the different uh, vegetative stage. So you can actually gain another two months of vegetative stage. So they're gonna reward you even more flower spike for next year. And this is how people uh, groom their plant for cultural awards. So that's a little uh, uh, tip on this. So as soon as they finish, I would trim them off right away. Here's another spike one. See, generally speaking, this is the imported plant uh, from last fall, from our good friend uh, Thailand. I would just cut off the spike because they actually, we was, I saved this just for the, uh, put, uh, for the purpose of this lecture, generally speaking, in our nursery, when the when the imported plant, okay, from Hawaii, from Thailand, uh, or on the first plant on the very tiny plant, we usually just pinch them off. We just the, we want to you that the plant have the energy to put up. What happened when they're spiking? They're not going to put up new root. So we, this is what we want to see. More root coming. Okay, and it's okay. They're epiphy, so it's, it's okay for them to kind of hang out outside the pot. They will keep going until they will stop. Look at this one here. Okay, it, it, they're epiphy, so they are nice and firm and thick, that succulent. So the, 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 the root is actually alive. So they can pick out a lot of uh, moisture from the air. So this is actually, even though this is in the pot, and they will have pot, they will have root inside the pot also, but they, it's okay, it's kind of pretty uh, in the bas in the hanging basket. You can put it in under the light stand and at the edge, so sort of let the root uh, hang out. <laughs> okay. Okay, so about the feeding, okay. 
on the feeding, uh, just go on to your regular, you know, if you're under with, with normal socket uh, fertilizer, uh, we feed in the same thing we, uh, two, every two weeks, every other week, we had the fertilizer and mega dry year round. Uh, this is one genus, you don't have to uh, stop watering. Like the, the earlier, Jamie showed you the dendrovium, uh, their parasia hybrid, they would drop the leaf, the nobiotide. They evergreen, uh, they go all year round. And if you have under, if you have light stand, they're even better because they really enjoy minimum 12 hours a day. So if in the summertime, uh, make sure you adjust to your light stand. And you, you, can actually, you actually can grow this with your Vanda, with your Catalina in the same shell, same session. You know, I know Jeff have a new light for the bright light. Okay, that would be perfect for it. Uh, this is, and what about the, the, the long spiking? There's a trick on getting a longer spike. Usually when the, when the spiking is usually occur at the end of the fall, about November, October, November, depending where you live. When the ringer started, I starts to spike like this, okay. When there's a spiking, if you go under light or you go in the cell, you want to start reduce the light. Okay, so if you are uh, if you are uh, putting it under light and you put it about for the height for the the higher intensity, lower than you want to get less light. Okay, uh, this is why a lot my friend when he's under light, if your print is too big to to uh, to move, he actually put an extra curtain, a, a shape, a block above it. So he reduced the light almost 20, 30 percent lower. By doing so, you instead of really short spike, kind of stuck up so the arrangement is not as pretty, you're going to get a longer elongation and also water, fertilizer, especially water. They do not like to dry out when they are spiking, okay? And especially, uh, totally opposite what we talk about at nobiotide and jovian. Nobiotide, you want the no water, you don't want feeding. This type, especially in flower, never thrifty on the fertilizer because they, they, they use a lot, they need a lot of nitrogen. And that's why they will have bottom yellow leaf, okay? Uh, so if you s have a sign of bottom yellow leaf like this, that means uh, my grower is not feeding it enough when it was spiking. Okay, so that's the trick. So when it starts spiking, uh, move it away from your regular area. Uh, if you are at home or you go this outdoor, move it to under your gutter, by, by the wall on the gutter, where there is shadier for you, okay? And then, as far as, and then we go about the uh, pests and disease. Generally speaking, they do not have a lot of pests. The only thing that you need to watch out is snail and slug. Okay, snail and slug love the very tender flower spike. Okay, uh, they do not have problem with mini bug. Too tough to chew. <laughs> uh, the leaf is nice succulent. Okay, they, they and. Uh, the uh, scale might not, scale usually don't bother them. Uh, the only problem more have is more on the crown rot, okay? Because the plant genetically have, just like phenolopsis, they have this, this leaf shape. We, same thing with engraftum, okay? Uh, Sepatidalia, okay? And that's okay. Even if they got, never let the water stay inside this crown here, okay? Or here. Okay, uh, what happens if you do have crown rot? Uh, if you go in outdoor, like in South Florida, for example, uh, after the rain or after you have a cold front, even though this week might not be the schedule to do Fison, okay, I know we do Fison once a month, but it's okay to do more than once a month if, if you have a cold front or if you have a heavy, a period of heavy 
rent. There's a lot of uh, fungi in the air. Okay, so you do want to find them. Uh, what happens if you do have uh, five cent? If you have crown rough, okay, here's, here's the one. Can we shoot that here? Okay, we don't always show you the prettiest one. We're also going to show you the problem. Okay, there's two ways. Uh, this particular case is the crown rough. Okay, the water got stay here and to Okay, and what I did before, uh, for those are new with us, remember the, okay. We, many of you have been with the program for a long time. Some of you are new. This is, the, uh, this is what this is essential. Five cent, concentrate it, and I'm going to do this again. It won't hurt, okay. So this is what we did before. When you first have a crown rot, uh, after they dry out, okay, put the concentrated, you can do, depend, uh, I, I gave about five drop, almost one ounce, uh, five, six drop in there. That will eliminate and kill the, fun, uh, the fungi, okay? And that will stop the rotting going down to the rotting the entire plant. And then, about, uh, when they dry, then, We did the two, this is my own two-in-one cake paste, okay, to seal them up, okay, to not only seal them up, so that is going to induce, see this here, I'm going to get induced more cakey, more side branches. Uh, you can tell this is already, have a side already, but now I'm gonna, uh, I see a new vegetative grow here. I'm gonna get more vegetable. Uh. So then in in couple months, this is what you get. Okay, so this is the one way, good way to save your monoca. Okay, same thing you can do this with your Venda, with your Anguactum, and of course, of course the Ringo status. Uh, second here. Okay. Okay. But this one here, for example, is not a crown rod. It, I think the the uh, it probably got fungi go into the, the center crown, and uh, epicomeres them got damage, and uh, one in the monocot once the uh, epicomeres got damage, they stop growing, and then the side division uh, they will have a cake from the side. Okay, here's another one, perfect example. This is actually grow outdoor <laughs> in Southern California, so the leaf is not as pretty. Uh, Ringo started jacket here. Once they establish, uh, don't put it right away in the middle of winter. We actually put this outdoor in March, so under our cover the patio and they this is actually go down to 45 a lot of time uh, when it's outdoor when it's cold in the winter time uh, occasionally you got this crown rot, crown rot issue so I'm gonna uh, seal them again here's another one here so we've done this a couple times already so it's it's pretty dry and then I take out more sheet here expose the more tissue so I'm gonna put up more the basil uh, is this is the best way that when you expose the basil here okay and here's one here okay uh, this it will give it a nice active stimulation for the for the basal cakey coming up. Okay, so uh, they very tough print. Even if they got crown rot problem, uh, stay in the crown, uh, it's easy, very easy to sell to save. 
uh, it's actually a, a lot more uh, disease and pest res resistant than phalaenopsis and, and Venda for, for me. Okay. So here's another one. On the young plant, on the first broom, when they finish flower, cut the spike off right away. And you can use, and the fresh cut flower, is, you can put in the, uh, the, the vase, and that, can, that will last about at least two weeks for you on a fresh cut and uh, regular starter. Uh, they, they actually can, and I, I know not in the United States, but uh, because too precious. But I've seen it in Thailand, on the long spike, people actually cut them and in a bundle of five or ten for cut flower, for people who uh, want to go to the temple and make a, a mega offer to the, the temple. So, and that's the soul fragrance. Uh, but I think, I'm pretty certain, as I think the uh, potential uh, once they start breeding for longer spread, I won't. I will not be surprised if one day you will see a blue, a white one, which is really long for cut flower. Think about uh, uh, even though the flower in the December and January. Uh, if you are a winter wedding, this is better than uh, Lydia Valley. Okay, so that is about what I offer. Um, what I do in my nursery on this uh, ring, Ringer Sutter Jacantia. Uh, they like it warm, they like high moisture. So if you are under light, indoor, unless you can do mix them every single day, put it in a basket like this, uh, put it in a pot with potty mix. Uh, you can actually go in the moss. I go in the moss up until three inch pot when they're baby plant. Once they get to this size, I, I we repot it into a five inch and six inch pot, then we go it in the four bark. Because once they get to this size, they let it dry between water more in the long term, just like this. Okay? Any question on, on the there's a question as to how low hmm? how low can the temperature can the temperature go down? Yes. Uh, this for example this is actually the uh, the succession of the uh, there's a you can tell the difference between this go outside and indoor. The outside one is always going to be uh, lighter lighter green, and this is the uh, area that we were testing. Uh, this is actually the peach color of all the color of Ringo Starter Jacket here. The peach color is the most hardy. I don't know why, but for all the color we tested. Uh, this one is actually is for outdoor in Southern California down to about 45. So uh, Ringo started, if you are not, if you're in Florida, you have a cold front coming, okay? You do not have to put it in the house, okay? And a space is an issue when you put orchid, a lot of orchid indoor. Put it under your gutter, by the house, under the gutter. The wall by the, by the house will be released and it's about 5 to 10 degree temperature. And, and just don't water, do not water them and they're okay. Uh, when we put this outdoor, we only check water maybe once a month. Because when it, in the winter time, when it's cold, there's, about, there's plenty of moisture in the air already. So you don't need to put in water. And, and also when you put it outdoor, at that low temperature, the plant kind of goes, they kind of go through kind of semi-dormant. So they do not require as much water for you. And there's a lot of this new intergenetic. For example, this is actually uh, homograssum by Ringo Starter Jacket here. And this is just sunflower. Uh, again, this is the, uh, uh, we have this number on the west side. This is a beautiful print. This is the number. If you, if a space is the issue. So compact. Yes. Homograssa is a micro mini uh, vendacious genus. And this is 
about if you tilt the the, the length. This is six years old. Minimum six years old. The the more leaf span, the more possible more flower. So this have three four spikes. So this is the one that is actually very good for under light uh, terrarium and also fragrance. So they got the size small size from Hong Kong Grossum and the fragrance from the Jacantia. So check out the website. This is the uh, uh, we constantly uh, this is the third generation we sell in this but this batch is the four end. See how compact they are? They're beautiful. They're, they, this is uh, when they're not in flower. They are pretty to look at it too. Okay. That's I think around nine sets of leaves. Yes. So this this can is a miniature form of the specimen. Okay. Okay. So I think if you never grow this before, uh, if you your space is the issue. Actually, Ringo Starter Jacantia is a lot easier to grow and flower than the Venda. You know, Venda, the big red Venda, anything with uh, Venda Centuriana need a lot of light, a lot of heat, and to flower. That's only good, really good if you live in South Florida to, to provide that kind of high humidity for them. Uh, for us, uh, we only grow, for me, if I want to use that kind of same uh, space and energy, I'd rather go Ringo Starter Jacantia because uh, it is very, very friendly. Every, everybody come to the nursery, they automatically draw to the fragrance. And this season is so rewarding because a lot of times your, your regular big phalaenopsis is might be just spiking only. Their blooming season is starting between Christmas uh, as early as the end of November, like Thanksgiving, Christmas, to Valentine's Day. This window of, is a perfect way. For me, in, when we, uh, in the uh, floral culture business, this is the, what we call the golden period, holiday. If, you mix the, if, you, if I mix the Christmas season, I can put it in the cooler house that Jamie showed you at lower temperature and delay them. For the Valentine's Day, so and so this is why you can kind of if you go indoor and under light, uh, I'm sure you have the uh, room or patio or uh, area that has different temperature. So you should have a, a light stand at a, in the in the in the room that have you no know, not as warm. So almost like we call it the, the warm zone and the intermediate zone. So you can take the the you can take the orchid from the warm zone to the in intermediate zone with lower temperatures to slow down. And that's how you time it for the orchid show. Okay, so this is how I do it myself. You know, when we, we do the, sh the timing for the Sarababa show, for example, or I can time it for the particular show. And it's all about the show. You know, you want to get the trophy, you want to get the, all the blue ribbon. Okay, uh, that's, that's about it for today. And